لكن تحديت الظروف وخذتها وحدي صبورا مستعينا بالصلاة كم مرة عصف الأنين بداخلي كم مرة قد ذاك قلبي من أساء محنتها وكم كرهت مصابها بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلاة وسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته SP Files uh, on it again والله الحمد لله I think this is my third appearance on the channel so yeah like share and subscribe to SP Files also bro Hadji there will always be a collaboration between me and SP Files may Allah bless the channel today's video is going to open your eyes and at the same time make you feel sick as to how some people due to interest with tyrannical regimes would throw their brothers under the bus wouldn't hesitate in slandering them disrespecting them and even worse eating their flesh Faris al Hamadi has been notorious ever since he got a social media platform in propagating the interests of his beloved rulers more notably in the Gulf as I mentioned before in my previous videos and he has taken it a step further by insulting legitimizing the arrests of those ulama in Saudi Arabia as a typical shoe and a parrot and a bootlicker that he is he has taken it too far I'm gonna go into it straight away this low-life bootlicking punk doesn't know when to stop he contradicts himself he has a book in front of him which usually these palace scholars write and he just reads from it he has a parroted rhetoric he likes the taste of dirty boots punk deserves all the insults he will get so let's get into the video now have a watch so there's been this rumor that i really need to address that saudi is jailing islamic scholars and then that rumor extended into saudi are they don't like Islam they're against Islam and they want to secularize their country and the ummah and wallahi this is the dumbest thing I've ever have ever heard to be honest and sorry to say um, first of all did you know that if if a Muslim is against Islam then he's not a Muslim anymore do you realize this right because how can a Muslim a person who believes in Allah and the hereafter and he follows the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he's against Islam that doesn't work that means he's not a Muslim, he's a Munafiq. So people are indirectly doing takfir. I think you agree. Maybe they know, maybe they don't know. Maybe they're too ignorant, ignorant to know that this statement, this accusation, actually you are doing takfir on a whole government. So people need to sit down and chill. That's number one. Number two, let's look at the facts. Is Saudi really is against Islam? Are they? Saudi is the country that serves the two holiest places on the planet. Mecca and Medina. They are the ones who are providing to us a convenience and the luxury and the safety to go do our rituals and acts of worship and doing our pilgrimage, Umrah, Hajj. We go visit the, the mosque of the Prophet wasallam, and we do our acts of worship with complete safety and beautiful services there. ACs, free water, Zamzam, Quran, Masahif is there, printed millions, maybe even now billions of books, Quran being printed from Saudi from their money and not only that they're printing all kind of islamic books books of hadith sahih muslim sahih bukhari all the other books the beautiful books that we are benefiting from not only that saudi has da'wah centers all over the world da'wah centers to call for islam these da'wah centers are, are selling alcohol prostitution they're calling for islam tawhid we have one here in, in the uae we have they're all over the world and they're calling for the tawheed, for calling for tawheed, calling for the sunnah. Now just to add, I don't deny that Saudi Arabia facilitates the hujjaj, they publish books, they have da'wah centers, I don't deny any of that. But we're going to get into the academic uh, video in just a second. I just want to sort of ease you in gently, like I always say. You, when you mentioned you're making indirect takfir when, this, when, they, when you said they're against Islam, and they're against Islam. You do know later on in your video, you make takfir as well. Have a watch. And by the way, the people who are spreading this are people, are enemies of Tawheed. 
and enemies of the Sunnah, and then, of course, enemies of Islamic governments. I'll say it again. I know people are going to get triggered by this, but this is the truth, and I'm not scared of saying. Allah is ridiculous analogy regarding, okay, well, Saudi Arabia, you know, they facilitate the Hajjaj and they publish books, etc., etc. Can you see the secularization of Saudi Arabia, lewdness, fawahish, and whatnot. Can you not see that? Even in your country, my Beit al Ibrahim is kufr. You talk about tawheed, there's kufr right under your nose, yet you don't speak about it. Now you said about the ulama, okay? Uh, that they're not locking up the ulama. Let's listen. Scholars are being jailed. Salih al Fawzan is there. Is he jailed? Sheikh Abdul Mahsin Abbad is there. Sheikh Abdul Aziz uh, al Sheikh, he's there. Sheikh Salih al Sheikh, he's there. Abdul Rahman al Barak, he's there. Uh, everybody, Suleiman al Rahali. Uh, Salih al sihami all of these scholars are there and being supported and they have permits and they are free to call to Islam, write books, do lectures, do courses, have khutbahs, mosques are all, are all over Saudi. Where, what, what, who's getting jailed then? This is the question, who is getting jailed? Not scholars, criminals. Criminals are getting jailed. Now the recent incident that happened and really what sparked this is one of the preachers, Saudi preachers, his name is Badr al-Mashari. And he was known for, this is the tip of the iceberg, he was known to give seerah uh, lectures and like reminders of seerah stories, things like that. Shari, Badr al-Mashari, people are saying, oh, this is just a preacher, look, he's innocent, he didn't do anything really. Do you really know? Have you met him? Do you know his personal life? The answer is no. All you know is some information on social media. That's it. You don't know anything what's, what's happening behind closed doors. And that's the problem with these sects. They're very secretive. You don't know what they're planning and what they're doing secretly. And so, Mishari, uh, Badr al-Mishari, let's first set the, the, the facts straight. It's not still confirmed. Maybe it's true, but it's not confirmed officially that he is jailed. Yes, he's taken into custody for interrogation and for, for investigation because of some concerning things he said in the past. Now the Saudi government, as a government, they want to make sure that their country is not threatened or the, the sovereignty or the peace is not threatened, their people is protected and safe from such ideologies. Not only a physical harm, but there's also a harm that's ideological, that aqidah-wise. They don't want to spread that in their, into their country, extremism and going against uh, you know, the, the, uh, the unity of Muslims, the jama'ah. So he's been saying something that's concerning. He's been uh, doing du'a against rulers publicly. That means, you know, like uh, as if he is, he is turning people against their governments. That's number one, doing du'a against rulers. And Imam al-Barbahari said, Any, you, if you see anyone doing du'a against a ruler, then know he is a man of deviance. Because from the sunnah that we du'a publicly, we do du'a publicly for the rulers. Because if the rulers are good and Allah guides them, then the benefit will come to us people. All of these ulama that are locked up by his spiritual father, Muhammad bin Salman, and his spiritual father, uh, what's he called, Muhammad bin Zayd. Okay, so these are the ulama that are like, all of these ulama that you could see right here are criminal. And the, the list has been updated. There's more ulama that have been locked up. The Imam of Mecca, he's been locked up, jailed for 10 years. This is the scholar we're talking about, Badr al Mashari. We're going to get to him. Okay, now, this is how vile and despicable this individual is. Very, very despicable. There's, there's, I could use more uh, words that are you know, a bit more inappropriate, but I'm trying to keep a level head here. What spurred this? Do you remember what I told you about how the political wins, these bootlickers will follow the political wins? He ain't going to tell you this, but this is why it's important that we create this video and open this series, the Balaf, against him. Bashar al-Assad recently got reinstated back into the Arab League. All right, reinstated back into the Arab League. And as you can see on screen, he visited Saudi Arabia, okay, as you can see. The man who's got hundreds of thousands of Muslim uh, blood on his hand was welcomed back into the Arab League and he was, you know, the red carpet was out for him and he was welcomed uh, with roses and whatnot. So as you can see on screen, as you can see Bashar al-Assad uh, is in Saudi Arabia to attend an Arab League summit on the 19th of May, the first move in more than a decade of war and regional isolation because of his, um, you know, massacres. Uh, Saudi Arabia boycotted him and um, they kicked him out of the Arab League and naturally so, right? Naturally so. So, what happened? Badr al-Mashari, back three, four years ago, made a dua. And it was normal because Saudi Arabia was opposing Bashar. So, the preachers, 
obviously within that territory had free reign. You know, the Saudi policy was against Bashar al-Assad. So there were du'as on the minbar, du'as on the pulpit and whatnot. And even Faris was saying that he's making du'a against the rulers, etc. Now, those, those particular uh, statements regarding him being against Bashar al-Assad was during that period, 2015, 16, 17, 18 and whatnot. He was then subsequently locked up after Bashar al-Assad came to Saudi Arabia. Isn't that convenient? Two months after he gets locked up. Do you know the reason why he got arrested? Do you know the du'a that he made? Okay, have a listen to the du'a that he made. أيها السوريون من بلاد الحرمين من أرض مكة من بلد طيبة Okay, I'm not going to translate all of it. So he starts off by saying, Oh Syrian people from the land of the Haramain, meaning the two holy sites, uh, from the land of Revelation, uh, etc. So we'll carry on. من مهبط الوحي أقف على منبر من مبار من أبر عاصمتها أرى المغوار وابن المغوار ورم He mentions basically that from the Manabir, okay, from obviously the, the capital, and then he mentions that the support from the men and the women and the children, etc. So come on. Making dua for the Syrian people. This is the reason why he got arrested. I'm going to play the dua. I'm not going to come back because it's going to take a while to just keep coming back and translate. So in a nutshell, he made dua for the Syrian people. There's nothing wrong with that. But the policy at that particular time, there was no issue. Conveniently, Bashar al-Assad gets reinstated into the Arab League after a decade. He lands in, in May. By July, the, the Sheikh is locked up, or, or August, or whenever it was. Is that not convenient? Is that, why didn't you let the people know, Faris, about this? This is why you are a slave to the rulers. How dare you, how dare you accuse them of being criminals? What was their crime? What was their crime? You are a barrier for progression for the Ummah, you and your life. I hate to say, they're the ones that carry this filthy methodology of subservient bootlicking. At the same time, right, I also concede that they just don't want to get Locked up, they don't want the heat. Oh, they all, he mentioned four or five other men said, Look, no, but why are they locked up? Because they fulfilled their agenda. Al Hajjaj bin Yusuf al Thaqafi, right, who is known, a governor of the Umayyad dynasty in Iraq, uh, the Salaf, right, uh, made takfir of him, right, made takfir of him. But hold on, yeah, you're going to argue, well, what do you mean? He was known, I'm going to go into it, I've got the book here, Al 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 He was known for recitation of the Quran. Futuhat, honoring Muslim women, and all the Islamic, uh, you know, uh, principles, he kept. You know what I'm talking about? He was very honorable, he never committed zina, never drank alcohol, and all of these things. But the Salaf made takfir of him. So the Salaf, right, made takfir of him. But yet he did all of this. So what I'm saying to you is that we're not arguing that they're against Islam tamaman, they're against Islam totally. But you could see the secularization and it shows the anti-Islamic policies that they're bringing into Saudi Arabia. So let's go into this. As you can see on screen, right, we got al bidai wa Nihaya. And Ibn Kathir mentioned, so as you can see on screen, he mentioned that it's been narrated to us about him, that he was a religious man, okay, he was religious. Al-Hajjaj bin Yusuf al-Thaqafi, listen, he was a religious man. And he used to stay away from intoxicants. It's to stay away from what? Intoxicants. And what else did Hajjad do? وَكَانَ يُكْثِرُ تِلَاوَةَ الْقُرْآنِ And he used to recite Qur'an Allah. Okay, this one here. And he avoided other sins. Okay? And it was known that he never committed fornication. But he used to kill people without hesitation. Of innocent people. Um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best what is true regarding his affairs. Okay? And what is hidden and what is concealed in people's hearts. Okay? Now, come back to me now. So this man here, Hajjad bin Yusuf al thaqafi was a very religious man. Okay? Stayed away from alcohol. And he also used to recite the Quran a lot. He used to stay away from sins. So this man here, you, based on what we can gather from his apparent, he weren't against Islam. Of course he wasn't. So I'm going to now present to you that Imam of the Salaf made takfir of him. So according to your standards, because we're going to do a whole series on you, son, where you've op we're all going to open this malaf. We're going to open these files. And what reason was that? Okay, what reason was that? We're going to get to. So back to Al-Bidai with Nihaya. And as you can see on screen, that has been narrated by Qatada that he said to Sa'id ibn Jubair, one of the Imams of the Salaf, Kharajta al-Hajjaj. You rebelled against Hajjaj. Hold on here. 
He recited the Quran. He avoided alcohol. He avoided sins. Why did they rebel against him? Okay, listen. And he responded by saying that I did not wallahi rebel against him until what? Hatta kafir. Until he disbelieved. Okay? Until what? He disbelieved. So coming back to me now. So you go al bidai wa nihaya. Faris you ahmak. Hajjad bin Yusuf al Thakafi had so much good qualities. But yet Sa'id bin Jubain made takfir of him. Okay? Made takfir of him. Now we're going to get to why they made takfir of him. So it shows that certain aspects of their behaviors, their actions, could conform to Islam. Most definitely conforms to Islam. So when we talk about Hajjad, he did X, Y, and Z. Recite the Quran, loved the Quran, he avoided sins, didn't drink alcohol, didn't commit fornication, etc. So likewise, Saudi Arabia, they do great work in facilitating the Hajjad. They publish books, they got da'wah centers, they do good deeds, not denying that. When we say they're going against Islam, okay, they're going against principles of Islam, i.e. introducing fawahish in their lands. So when Hajjad bin Yusuf al thakafi was made takfir of, I'm sure the Salaf, right, knew that he never drank alcohol, he was reciting the Quran, meaning because we're going to get to it as well, it's going to be very comprehensive. Uh, listen, that book that you had, of the other books as well, that you had, was most definitely from a palace scholar, and it'll have all the things that you bootlickers, like your bootlicking manual. We're going to show you the comprehensive mas'ala in detail, rather than just following this bootlicking methodology. The question asked is, why did they make takfir of him? Why did they make takfir of him? We're going to get to that now. As you can see in my hand, we've got the book Al Awasim Wal Qawasim by Ibn Wazir Yamani Al Mujtahid. Okay? Ibn Wazir Yamani Al Mujtahid. As you can see on the screen, he mentions Qala Iyadun. Qadi Iyad. He mentions Wa Hujjatul Jumhuri. That the evidence for the majority is that them rising up, rising up against Hajjaj is not because of his fisk. It wasn't because of his sins. What? That it was because he changed the Sharia and he made apparent his cover. So, what did he do? He changed the Sharia. So, continued on. So, as you can see on screen, so we're going back to Al Bidai wa Nihaya now. He mentioned that Umar bin Abdul Aziz, okay, mentioned, he says, He said, If every nation brought their khabif, their vile ones, that we just present Hajjaj, he would overpower them all. Subhanallah And then we got Imams of the Salaf, okay, that mentions that uh, the people different regarding Hajjaj. They're different regarding Hajjaj, right? The people different. And they asked Mujahid, okay, they asked Mujahid about um, Hajjaj. And he said, You're asking me about the old Kafir, Mujahid. The student of Ibn Abbas, you call him a kafir, okay? Well, according to you, they will be takfiris, right? They're Khawarij, aren't they? So you will snitch on them. You will snitch on the, uh, the Salaf. Because that's what your methodology is. You're a snitch, mate. You're an absolute phony. Anyway, and he mentions that it's been, and it's been written by Ibn Asakir that they asked Sha'bi about Hajjaj, and he said, Mu'minun bin Jibti wa Tahud, kafirun billahi al Adim. Kafir is takfiri. So according to you, you snitch, you, you would call them as Khawarij, and you would lock them up. You, will, you, you talk about the Salaf, right? But you would be the first one to lock them up, because you are a snitch. I'll be honest with you, you are a snitch. You are an absolute bootlicker. Anyway, let's carry on. And he says, this is what was been said. This is what uh, Thawri and Ma'mar and Ibn Tawus and Abihi. Meaning Tawus, what did he say? Qala ajaban li ikhwanina min ahlil Iraq. I am surprised by the people of Iraq that call Hajjaj a believer. Cap so far. Number one, you said that they make an indirect takfir by saying they have a problem with Islam. Uh, but then later you say that those who say such a thing are enemies of Tawheed and Sunnah. You just make takfir money. So that's number one. Get that out of the way. Be careful when you speak. You're dumb. You don't even understand what you're talking about. Man. Your English is... Okay, it's not the best, but you, you need to improve. What I'm going to show you is how the ulama of the past dealt with people like you and your likes. Okay? As you can see on screen. As you can see on screen, we've got the book. He died 909 after the Hijri. Born 841. So he mentions... Subhanallah I'm just going to pay through it. He mentions... It's a strange thing nowadays from some of these immoral scholars. Look at this. They mention the traditions regarding obeying the ruler, etc. like you do, you booty cap, for many of the tyrants. And these tyrants are basically drowning and swimming in oppression. 
And they took the people's wealth unjustly and they killed innocent people unlawfully more than a thousand times, etc. And they made permissible the wealth of the people, their blood, their honor, and they basically, you know, embellished their crimes to make him, to, to justify them. And they mentioned that he's just, and if it weren't for him, and it weren't for him, etc., etc. And it carries on. And then what he does, he presents the hadith, um, the, 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 the Hanbali scholar, and it mentions the hadith in Imam Ahmad in his Musnad regard, regarding Awqab. Uh, that they will, may Allah protect you from foolish readers. Um, and then he responded by saying, وَمَا ذَاكَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Who are these, يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, أُمَرَاءُ يَكُونُونَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَنْ دَخَلَ عَلَيْهِمْ فَصَدَّقَهُمْ بِكِذْبِهِمْ وَأَعَانَهُمْ عَلَى ظُلْمِهِمْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ لَيْسُ مِنِّي وَلَسْتُ مِنْهُمْ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, that there will come leaders after me and whoever enters upon them and believes them in their lies and aids them in their oppression they are not from me and I am not from them and they will not join me on the hold and, and the one that doesn't enter upon them and then he mentions that whoever does not enter upon them and does not believe in their lives and does not aid them they are from me and I am from them and it carries Ibn Abd al Hadi says subhanAllah say it's surprising that all of these from what? min kalbin najasin this filthy dog La deena lahu wa la aqal. He has no deen and no aqal. You are a kalbun najis. You are, Faris, a kalbun najis. As Ibn Abdul Hadi said. It carries on. I don't want to get into it in too much detail. Now may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give patience to those ulama that are unjustly imprisoned. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them uh, support and relief. Ameen. Now Ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawziyah mentioned about these so-called scholars, the one that Faris and his likes. So, as you can see on screen, we got the book Al-Fawaid, Ibn Al-Qayyim Al-Jawziyah. And Ibn Al-Qayyim Al-Jawziyah mentions, Ulama is su, that the, the evil scholars sit on the door of Jannah, calling towards it, to the people towards it, bi aqwalihim, with their sayings. But they call to the fire with their actions. Okay? You and your life. And with their tongues, they're saying, come, come on in to Jannah. But their actions are saying, don't come in. And the more they talk to the people to come in, the more their actions say, don't listen to us. Because if they were truthful, they would be the first to apply it. SubhanAllah. This is applied to you and your life, Kalbun Najis. Okay? You filthy dog. And I did say this, Ibn Abdul Hadi said this, about you and your life. I'm just applying it to you. Because you carry a filthy, toxic methodology. You are traitors. You are stooges. You are bootlickers. You are taking the ummah back. You don't want the Ummah to progress. You're living comfortably in the Emirates. You're living comfortably, mate. That's fine. But you don't need to brand those rulers and, and, and your tongue, stain your tongue with uh, backbiting the, the ulama. Okay, they're not ulama because they, they spoke up. As, a, as an alim should, they need to enjoy the good and forbid the evil. Okay. And Imam al-Ghazali said, it probably wasn't in that book of yours because that's a brutal like manual. Um, it, 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 why is Amal bin Ma'roof wa Nahi al-Munkar? Qutub al deen it's the structure of the religion. Now, Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullah alayhi, when scholars were imprisoned unjustly, look at Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullah alayhi compared to you. Subhanallah alayhi and your likes, the kalbun najis. Okay, as you can see on screen, we've got al bidawi Nihaya again, I don't want to keep putting the book up. So imagine the Hafiz al-Mizi was reading a chapter from uh, al-Bukhari, the Khalif al-Ali al-Ibad, uh, under the Nasr Dome in the Umayyad Mosque. So some of the Ash'ari jurists, because obviously the Mamalik were Ash'aris, uh, they complained, right? And they became angry. And Ibn Sarsara said, who the enemy, uh, basically got him jailed, okay? And so news reached Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullah and he wasn't happy, okay? It was sad. And he went to the jail and got him taken out. So thereafter, they went to the palace and found the judge there, okay? So they basically had a little argument over Al-Mizzi. So Ibn Sarsara took an oath and said that he would return Al-Mizzi back to jail. Half is Al-Mizzi. Half is Al-Mizzi. The one that wrote to Hadibul Kamal fi Asma'i Rajal. A 20 volume book. Otherwise, he'll step down. So basically, long story short, news reached, uh, what's it called, Egypt, okay? And they had him re imprisoned, okay? And what happened? So Mizi was then released and had him returned. And he tell me, I told him what happened, etc. So what did the, the judge say? He mentioned no one would debate Aqa'id, okay? And if anyone does, their blood will be spilled and his house and shop will be raised to the ground. And then obviously, after that, it cooled down. Okay, so this is how honorable scholars deal with 
those who are imprisoned in ju- unjustly not to call them uh, criminals and well, why is this have some shame have some shame now you're gonna cater to you know your crowd because that's what it is every now and then one of you pop up like i've been responding to you and your life for, for two three years if not more you know showing the evidence of because you've hid it you know there's books that you've hid you know so these are just two books i've presented over the two three years i've recorded hundreds of videos and at the end of the day you're just another number you will continue to bootlick your policies your pan-arabism golf leaders are your you know like i hate to say it, it's like the vatican for you you know your rulers are like popes that's the way you behave now to end off right to show you how your rulers are holy the muqaddis to you and you'll do anything to back you'll you'll do anything to back you defend your leaders to death i'll give you an account right to show you how this salafist you know obedience to rulers has gone so far the neo salafis should i say pseudo salafis but and whatnot in iraq when the americans invaded there was a salafi scholar right yahya al-kubaisi who's a political analyst journalist he goes into it and this salafi scholar gave permissibility and wrote a book same thing with rabia al-madkhali we're going to his book as well he wrote a book deeming it permissible to aid the americans the invaders and wrote a book as you can see on screen and he wrote a book basically allowing muslims to aid the uh, mutaghallib the kafir mutaghallib not the imam mutaghallib the kafir mutaghallib okay this is how far this bootlicking methodology goes this salafist methodology this neo-salafist methodology muhammad bin abdul wahab was alive today honestly I, I fear for their for their for their fate so let's listen to yahya al-kubaisi mm. لديهم رجل سلفي داخل مدينة العلم اسم أبو منار العلم هذا اخترع لهم فتوى مع دخول الأمريكان زين بجواز التعامل مع المتغلب وأصدر كتاب بهذا الشأن فكل بيت الجبارة مع أهل العلم صاروا ويا الأمريكان بشكل صريح ثم أصبحوا صحوات ثم أصبحوا حلفاء للمالكي والآن هم حلفاء للحجد الشعبي See how far the Salafis obedience rule goes. They, uh, some Iraqi tribes called Alam and, and, and Jubair or Jubar or whatever they call, they um, basically aided the Americans. Then they become the Sahwa. Then they became the uh, Hulafa and Maliki, Nur al Maliki, and become their, uh, their um, aiders. And then they became members of Hajj al Shabi, who were notorious in slaughtering Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, Human Rights Amnesty International Role reports on this. And here's the individual, as you can see on screen. This is uh, Abu Munar al Alami, okay? Abu Munar al Alami, Salafi, obviously. As you saw in this video, we presented context. We have shown you how Faris Hamadi uh, was deceptive and lied, okay? And it, he's shameless. When you follow this bootlicking methodology, you become a shameless weasel. Like Ibn Abdul Hadi, the book I presented, when he was speaking about the scholars of his time who were, you know, legitimizing tyrannical rulers, what did he call them? Kalbundajis, they're filthy dogs, and that's why you are Faris. You are a filthy dog. I'm just implementing what Ibn Abdul Hadi at the Mishqi Al Hanbali said. You will be exposed. This will be continuous. We won't stop. We're gonna highlight your fraudulent methodology. Take care. Wassalamu alaikum wa Muhammad. Yeah, yeah, go, 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 go. ليس الغريب غريب الشام واليمن إن الغريب غريب اللحد والكفن إن الغريب له حق لغربته على المقيم في الأوطان والسكن سفر بعيد وزاد لا يبلغني وقوتي ضعفت والموت يطلبني ما أحلم الله عني حيث أمهلني وقد تماديت في ذنب ويسترني تمر ساعات